If you care about the purity of your concentrates, you're going to want to see this breakdown of BHO resin versus rosin. Come on, but before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A. Plus, see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. Come on, High C, let's get into it. You do concentrates? I tend to stay away from them. When I do, I actually prefer rosin, and I feel like you're gonna spoil my dreams today. Uh, all right, so rosin is just squeezed with heat and pressure, right? You're taking a bud, or preferably you're taking bubble hash, putting it in those little bags and squeezing it in the parchment paper, and very clean, very pure, right? That's what I thought. You know, I mean, there's it's nothing else but heat and pressure, right? Right. And then resin, we talk about BHO resin, uh, butane hash oil, butane honey oil, whatever you want to call it. That is when you pack the weed in a column and then you uh, blast butane, a solvent, through it. And then you get this beautiful honey oil because it's a polar solvent. It's able to take out uh, all the terpenes and cannabinoids. Uh, and some other stuff. So my biggest fear is the butane. I'm I'm not sold on having my cannabis butane blasted, but you gave me good pushback before we started. Yeah, I was just sitting here looking at the notes, and I'm thinking about how many decades do I have taking a lighter and going like that and inhaling the butane? Yeah, you know? I you know, I don't like to think about that. You know what, though? I was thinking about it. That is the butane uh, exhaust or whatever you want to say. That's the butane after it's been combusted. Uh -huh. Raw butane is a bit different. I know that from when they uh, do the oil extraction, when they have the raw gases come out, it's really bad for the environment, man. So it is a lot different than them being combusted. See, and that's what scares me. Well, that's a legitimate concern. And if they're not doing it properly, they are going to leave a bunch of residual solvents in there and it's not good to either combust or just inhale them raw i agree okay so that was always my thing that's why i've stayed away from resin sure, and sure. preferred rosin but you as we were talking about this you told me that there's some issues with rosin as well think about what rosin is you're taking that flour and you are just squeezing it so you're squeezing everything out of it that's flower rosin. And by the way, if you look at flower rosin, very impure. You can see all the waxes and stuff in there. So they will uh, use bubble hash. And bubble hash, of course, you're taking out water-soluble, anything that's water-soluble in there. So when you squeeze that, it has a bunch of these fats and lipids and things that come out with the water. That affects the taste. It affects the purity. And another thing about rosin is anything that is on that plant material gets squeezed into your product. So your it, rosin is a concentrate. All these that we're talking about is concentrate. So whether it's a pesticide that you sprayed, uh, even if it's something benign like a, an oil, or it's a horticultural oil, neem oil, any residual of that is getting squeezed into your concentrate, getting squeezed and concentrated. So if it's on the flower, it's going to end up in the rosin. I would think so, yeah. And even if you're using bubble bags, any water-soluble compounds, which a lot of them are, are going to end up getting into your final product. Yeah, And that's not the case when we're using butane blasting? It doesn't pull that stuff in? It does, but it is diluted in a solvent. You're diluting it in that butane. So while it's in that diluted form, you can clean it up. You can run it through filters. My buddy uses a diatomaceous earth filter, a silica filter, basically. Uh, they'll use carbon filters, and you can filter out the impurities. You can filter out the, uh, ug the ugly colors, the pigments, stuff like that. And so you end up getting a much cleaner product, and I got a caveat, if it's done right at the end. It has to be put in a vacuum oven and purged of all that butane. 
Um, and that's science. I mean, they do that in a bunch of other industries. You know, they extract. We didn't invent any of this stuff. Yeah, this has been going on in other industries for decades, and it works. Okay, so I've heard you talk about the entourage effect before. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I know I'm going to get if I'm doing rosin. Am I risking missing out on the entourage effect? And before you answer, what is the entourage effect? The entourage effect is how the terpenes uh, interact with the cannabinoids. The cannabinoids is your THC or your CBD. Uh, the terpenes are the limonene, limonene and, you know, the things that make it uh, different flavors. But it doesn't only contribute to the flavor. And we all know it contributes to the buzz. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing extracts, am I losing that entourage effect? It really depends on your inputs. I mean, if you had great... No, uh, butane will pull out the terpenes. will pull out the terpenes and cannabinoids. Okay. Yeah, so it really depends on your inputs. If you're taking, and that's a big issue with some of this stuff, if you're taking garbage, uh, you know, something that's been sitting in a warehouse for two years, garbage input materials, garbage in, garbage out. You're only concentrating that garbage. So, of course, it depends on your input materials. And that does happen. I've seen people doing, like, center pivot crops. And oh, sure. Stuff that I wouldn't smoke if I looked at it in its flower form, and they're turning it into resin. And so I also have that concern when I go to buy resin. Of course. And it's it, they, we talked about, remember we did that video on the box where <laughs> yeah. they can irradiate it and clean up anything, or not clean up. Uh, kill any poisons or pathogens and then turn it into extracts. Uh -huh. Yeah, so absolutely you got to worry about it. And this is one of those things where, I don't know, can we say polishing turds? <laughs> well, okay, so that was my next question yeah. too. If, if they're using garbage inputs, there seems to be like tricky ways that they, re you said, polish the turd. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like adding, you know, going to radiate it first of all. Um, you can, I mean, they can just remove the waxes and all that crap that might be on there. The uh, I'm specifically more concerned about to make it look good again, the stuff that they add in afterwards. Oh, you like the spray on terps or the terps that you just drop in there. Yeah, it, it, they can be. But then again, there's folks that make really good BHO. It has to do with the inputs. It has to do with are you using good quality uh, inputs, using good quality fresh cannabis or junk. So how do I know that if I'm going to buy some uh, resin or rosin at the store? How do I know the inputs? And unfortunately for me, I look at reputation. I go around and I talk to people about uh, you know what's good. Usually when they're over processed, you can tell. You can absolutely tell. Spray, you know, not, I call them spray on terps, but added synthetic terps. You can just tell. All right. And before we started, you were also yeah. telling me about a final part of the process cold curing and then winterization and i yeah they're two different things so cold curing you would do when they have rosin they just let it sit you can let it sit in a cooler room it's cold here we're drying in this room it's cold uh, but you just let it sit you're letting everything meld together um winterizing is different winterizing is when you take uh your bho or you can dilute if you want to use it with uh, uh rosin you have to dilute it in solvent which kind of defeats the purpose uh -huh. but you're putting it in a cold you know you're putting in cold temperatures and what happens is the fats separate and so if you want a cleaner product you can just skim those fats off the top uh, maybe it's on the bottom, actually. And you get yourself a much cleaner product. And one last thing I forgot to talk about, which is if we're talking resin versus rosin, what's cleaner is you get to clean up BHO resin. Uh, you have a lot more opportunities to clean it up. As to where with rosin, you're basically making hash and then squeezing it. You were telling me about something called color remediation. Yeah, that column is CRC, that uh, column that they pack with the dias diatomaceous earth or whatever, the charcoal. Mm -hmm, the filtering uh, column? Color remediation column, man. CRC, I think of color correction because it's pulling out all that ugly stuff. It's getting st stuck in the carbon filter or the diatomaceous earth filter. And you get this beautiful honey oil out the bottom. So what's left after that? I know that a lot of people uh, get you know freaked out about, oh, it's going to trap my terpenes. The terpenes are hydrocarbons, so they're able to go right through. Final thoughts. BHO could be cleaner if it's done right. Rosin is more natural, but it might leave a lot of gunk. So my take is I actually stick with the resin now, the BHO resin. 
But what about you? Rosin or resin? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Share this video with another grower you know. And check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending. We think you'll dig them.